I saw this time and again. I saw another meeting. I saw a cluster of a group of people. Or sorry, to the convention of the said party. I saw a group of people meeting secretly, planning to boycott the activities. And the reason is because there are two, there are multiple factions. But we pray that there will be peace in that convention. But the destiny of Nigeria will not be decided in that first convention. So, I began to pray and intercede to know the mind of God concerning the future of Nigeria's democracy and 2023 election. The reason is because Nigeria is at the trigger point of revival for the end time church globally. Nigeria is possibly the only country where her citizens are in almost all the nations of the earth. So everything that happens in the political space of Nigeria, we have to be concerned about it. And one of those days while I was praying on a Friday, the Lord stopped me and told me to sit down. And I began to write as he told me in details what will happen from now till the election. Some of those things I will keep it from public notice. But I will give you a parable. Samuel was the last judge of Israel. Listen to my parable. Samuel took over from Eli, judged Israel. But the Bible tells us that around 1 Samuel chapter 9, there about to chapter 12, the children of Israel wanted a king. And so, Samuel went to God and God told him, it's not you they rejected, it was me. And one of the reasons was because Samuel's two sons became corrupt judges. They began to take bribes. So, the government before this government may represent Samuel. And that's the reason why at the end of that government it was said, that people in the cabinet were corrupt. So they wanted someone that would come and fight corruption. Just the way Israel wanted a king that would come and fight her war. Are you listening to my parable? And the Bible says that when Saul was anointed, he stood from shoulders up taller than all the men of Israel. And it happened to be that the leader became someone of a great height and stature. But Samuel had given them a warning. Just the way the previous leader gave a warning few months to when he would hand over. And he said that the people would beg for him. Small wonder why when Saul was reigning and Samuel was long dead. A time came when even Saul went back to seek for Samuel. And so, some people are trying to play somebody to come back to the throne because they think that the solution of a nation is in a man. It is God that exalts and dethrones. God is the only savior of this country. And so, if Samuel refused to answer from the dead, or if he refused to interfere, then why are we going back to seek for Samuel when his time is over? But the point where Nigeria has got into is between 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. Saul died. And it was time for the throne to go to David. Remember that Samuel told Saul that God has rejected you and he has chosen your neighbor. Meanwhile, this neighbor was from another tribe, but happened to be around King Saul. Yes or no? That means the, pres the next president is not far. 
I'm using the Bible so that you will not say this one is somebody just come and talk. You can see, you can trace our destiny from there. But you know, when Saul died, the throne didn't automatically go to David. There was contention, just like there is contention now. The Bible says David was head over one tribe. Meaning that this particular person will be accepted first by one faction of the nation. And then Saul had a son called Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth wasn't really concerned about the throne. But there was a man called Abner, the son of Ner, who was called who? Saul's uncle. Uncle can mean many things. For instance, uncle can mean political godfathers who brought Saul to the throne or who sustained Saul's reign. Ishbosheth had an ambition. And so he brought, uh, sorry, Abner had an ambition. So he brought Ishbosheth and made him king. Notice that Ishbosheth was not anointed. That means he wasn't chosen. But the Bible says he disappoints the devices of the crafty so that their hands will not perform their enterprise. And when you read chapter 2 and chapter 3, fight broke out, a war broke out between Ishbosheth and Abner. And somehow Ishbosheth was killed. Abner too was killed by Joab. Even though Abner had made peace with David. That means that you may have two people coming for September. We still don't know who will be the next president because there was a delay. But to round everything up, Abner was killed, Ishbosheth was killed. And then the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter, is it 2 or 3 now, that the elders of Israel came and made David the king. Brothers and sisters, it's time for David to ascend the throne in this nation. So what are the characteristics of David? David was from a tribe called Judah. Judah was, Judah meant praise. And after the death of Joshua in Judges chapter 1, when they were still to go out against the Canaanites and conquer the nations, they asked the Lord, which tribe will go first? God said, let Judah. Psalms 114, where we read last week, to show you that everything that we've been doing is prophetic. It says, when Israel came out of Egypt and from a, a, a people of strange language, it said, Judah was what? His sanctuary. And that was what made Israel to have dominion. So there is a tribe, a major tribe, that is known for praise and worship. And if you put two plus two together, it could be that the David is coming from that tribe. I'll talk again when the Lord permits me. I didn't call the name of any candidate. I didn't call the name of any party. I didn't say who will be the next. So don't go on social media and misrepresent us. This is not just for you to clap and applaud. This is for us to watch and pray. When next I come, I may give you other characteristics. Can I give you another characteristics? God had to convince Samuel that David was the chosen king. Obviously because David physically didn't have the stature of a king. 